Good afternoon everybody, it's Debbie Evans here and Rolo and we're about to read to you from The Secret Adventures of Rolo, book three, The Dragon's Pram. And this is quite an exciting chapter where Rolo has a very important mission given to him by the dragons and it's chapter four in the third book. That night, without being summoned, I took myself to the Athelstan tree. A glance at the piled heap at the foot of it reassured me that the egg was real and not a figment of my imagination. I hoped that Chickpea had understood the urgency of my whispered message. Whilst we were waiting for her, I asked Athelstan something that had been puzzling me ever since I'd met Ridian. I remember once hearing the floppy-haired boy telling the smiley lady that the English used to have a white dragon as their symbol on their flag. Is that right? Athelstan unfurled himself from the tree trunk and bent his face down closer to talk to me. A history lesson for you, little pup. Hengist and Horsa were brothers who landed in Britain with other Angles, Jutes and Saxons in the early 400s to fight for Vortigern, the then King of Britain. Hengist went on to rule the Anglo-Saxons for a period of around 30 years. His symbol was that of a white dragon, and when his army went to fight against the people of Wealis, strangers, now called Wales, it was true that the red and white dragons would actually meet in combat, and I don't just mean their pictures on the battle flags. I tried to take this in, but didn't really know what Athelstan meant. Whilst the tree dragon was talking, I kept glancing down at the heap of leaves, trying to detect any signs of movement, which would surely mean new dragon life. Reading my thoughts, Athelstan said, It's too cold for the egg outdoors in the forest. It needs to be kept at a constant temperature for the next few weeks. What happened to the white dragon then, if it was a real dragon and not just a picture on a flag? I asked, returning my gaze to the tree dragon and keen to know more. Perhaps he is still here, said Athelstan mysteriously and then retreated into the bark. Tell me when your little friend is here, said the voice as it faded. Hmm, food for thought. I'd heard the smiley lady say that the white dragon flag was proudly carried into battle at the head of an English army right up until the 11th century by the kings of Wessex. I wondered why it wasn't used anymore. A curious sound of creaking broke into my thoughts and I saw Chickpea wriggle through the undergrowth, pushing something that looked very much like a doll's pram. Will this do? asked Chickpea, struggling with the exertion of pushing the thing all the way from her home. I think it's perfect, I said, impressed with the little terrier. I found it in the garage. It belongs to my people, but I don't think they play with it anymore. What do we need it for? She asked eagerly. Yulia and Dar held up their lanterns, illuminating the heap of leaves at the base of the tree. Athelstan revealed himself again. Oh, goody, are we having a bonfire? squeaked Chickpea. Goodness gracious, no, fires aren't allowed in the forest in any case, admonished the tree dragon, leaning down to survey the scene. Yulia and Dar set their lanterns on the ground and motioned to Chickpea to bring the old pram nearer to the heap. The woodland folk gently scraped away the leaf mould and revealed the glistening egg. Chickpea's eyes were as round as dinner bowls at this amazing sight. I explained in hushed tones about the dragon egg and how I'd brought it from the Iron Age and that it couldn't stay in the forest because it wasn't warm enough to hatch and also there was a big risk of it getting broken. Where are we going to take it then? asked Chickpea, all ears. My house, I said a bit louder for the benefit of the assembled woodland audience. I've found the perfect hiding place in the airing cupboard. It's hardly ever used and I had a look in there when I was exploring upstairs and there's a pile of old towels and bath mats on the floor in there. We could tuck the egg up behind the hot water tank. That would be very snug. In fact, I wouldn't mind sleeping in there myself. Yulia giggled. You won't have to hatch the egg yourself, Rolo. Of course not, I know that, I said. 
I thought your people had a stair gate to stop you going upstairs. How will you be able to access the airing cupboard? said Chickpea. They took it down and said I was to be trusted now because I'm a good boy, I answered with a smirk. She didn't say anything to this, remembering having her cat flat blocked for a while after she went missing during a previous adventure. It will make a perfect incubator, but you will just have to keep an eye on the temperature, said Athelstan, and don't let the egg get too hot or too cold. You can add or remove towels as necessary. Everybody helps align the pram with moss and leaves to stop the egg from being damaged during transit. The old doll's pram had very little in the way of suspension and I feared the egg may be in for a bumpy ride. All we had to do now was transfer the egg into its pram, but how on earth were we going to do that? We all stood round looking at each other. Athelstan suggested that Yulia and Dar hold on to the pram wheels and he directed Chickpea and I to very carefully manoeuvre the egg with our front paws, lifting it up and then laying it back down gently on its mossy bed in the borrowed pram. We managed to accomplish this delicate task without too much fuss, but we did squabble all the way home, fighting over whose turn it was to push the pram and blaming each other when the egg bounced alarmingly every time the pram wheel caught a tree root or went down a pothole. Miraculously, we reached my garden. New challenge. How on earth were we going to get the pram through the garden gate? It certainly wouldn't fit underneath, which of course was my usual point of entry. Wait there, Chickpea instructed, and she squeezed under the gate and into my garden. I thought so, she said when she poked her nose back under the gate on the forest side. There's an old trampoline at the bottom of your garden in the nettles. If we push it over here, I can jump up and open the gate. Sometimes Chickpea can be annoyingly clever. We managed to shift the small trampoline between us. It was more robust than the dragon egg. And sure enough, Chickpea bounced high a few times and worked away at the bolt with every bounce up in the air. I must just show you this wonderful picture of Chantal's. There you can see Chickpea bouncing to open the gate. The egg lay quite oblivious to the drama, snug in its pram. Eventually the bolt gave way and the gate swung open. We'd better put the trampoline back in the nettles in case we need it again, I said, and we collided in our eagerness to push the pram into the sanctuary of the garden. I was dreading seeing the floppy-haired boy appear at his bedroom window at any moment. You'll need to come into the house with me, Chickpea, and help me through the trapdoor because I don't think I'm able to manage on my own, I said, as I hadn't really thought about the next bit of the plan. How on earth was I going to get the egg upstairs? I couldn't really tell as it was still dark, but I could imagine Chickpea was smiling, pleased to be a necessary part of this secret adventure. We left the doll's pram in the back garden on the decking and pondered how to get the egg up the steps. I told Chickpea to wait whilst I went in the kitchen to see if there was anything on hand that might help. I had a brainwave. I tugged down the tea towel from its hook above the radiator and went back through the trapdoor with the tea towel in my mouth. We stood on the step immediately above the pram and snuggled the egg into the tea towel with our front paws and then grabbed two opposite corners each in our teeth and carefully came up the garden steps. I gave Chickpea my corners while I backed into the cupboard under the sink and when Chickpea followed me in and tried to pass me the precious egg, I nearly dropped it in the bucket whilst we were both trying to fit in the cupboard. I told her I would go first and so I stepped down onto the kitchen floor. I held the egg in the tea towel cradle whilst Chickpea got down. Next problem was how to open the kitchen door. Chickpea had already thought of that. We laid the egg in its sling carefully on the floor. She stood on my shoulders and reached up to open the door handle. If she slipped, she would surely land on the precious egg. We paused to listen, but thankfully all was quiet upstairs. I didn't even know what the time was, but judging by the creeping light, we didn't have long to complete our task before the smiley lady woke up. How on earth are we gonna manage the stairs? Whispered Chickpea, voicing the next hurdle we would encounter. Same procedure, you go backwards this time, very slowly up the stairs with the egg cradled in the sling between us. Are you ready? I tried to sound confident. 
I'm not entirely sure how, but our cunning plan worked. The airing cupboard was just at the top of the stairs and I had already thought to pull out a bit of bath mat to wedge the door slightly open so it would be easier to quietly open the door of this makeshift hidey hole. We lay the egg on the landing carpet and set about making a nest in its new incubator. We worked quietly using our front paws to arrange the towels behind the hot water tank and I kept an ear up in case we, were dis we disturbed the sleeping inhabitants of the house. Satisfied with our nesting, we gently laid the egg, still on the tea towel, on the bed of towels and banked up the other linen, covering the egg over and using our back legs to push the door against the bath mat until the airing cupboard was almost shut. That should do it, I whispered, pleased with our handiwork. We silently crept downstairs. Chickpea ran home. I forgot all about the doll's pram. The floppy haired boy nearly tripped over it the next morning. Mom, there's a doll's pram on the decking. So that's the end of that chapter from The Secret Adventures of Rolo, book three, The Dragon's Pram. And Rolo and I will be back tomorrow at 3.15 again to read another chapter. And we'll be doing this every weekday during lockdown. So we hope you'll join us again. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.